Hey, what is up everybody and welcome back to another video. Today, we are going to be listening to the OSTs for Volume 4. Can't wait for it. I absolutely love listening to the soundtrack for Ruby. You can never really hear them because I never concentrate on them when I'm actually watching the show. I can just, they're kind of there in the background, I never really focus on them. Because I know I'm going to do a video on them eventually and I'm going to listen to all of them properly. So, I never really seem the need to listen to them. But, uh, it's going to be great. I absolutely love them. They always have, like, integral storytelling to them. And it's great. Because not a lot of shows do that. They just kind of have the most random music in the background you are my friend uh -huh. you know what i mean like that that's from naruto if you couldn't have guessed i think i reference naruto at least once in like every video that i do but uh yeah it's gonna be awesome cannot wait also just to let people know i am 10 count them 10 subscribers away from 1000 which is freaking crazy so, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get that soon, maybe in the next video or the video after that, depending on how well these do. I cannot wait. Let's go. Alrighty then. Going with the good old, uh, Bruce Almighty. Also, that was incredibly loud. This is what I mean. I can't win with the goddamn. Oh my god. Right, turn that shit down. Ah! Oh! <laughs> it's so loud. You've got no idea how much I just turned that down, and it was still so loud. As you can tell, I, I do great uh, when it comes to horror games. <laughs> Oh, you damn straight it wasn't fair. Ozpin's got a plan, though. You can smell it. So, yeah, this is like a generic song about the entire season, basically. With all of the shit that they've been going through because of the end of Volume 3. Sponsor me. This is all I need. I don't need money. I spend a ridiculous amount on these. Yeah, I mentioned it when I was obviously watching the volume, but I actually enjoyed volume 4 quite a lot. A lot of people said it was really slow, and don't get me wrong, definitely slower than than the others than the other volumes, but I feel like you need slower volumes to set up for the big ones. Oh God, don't hit me with that. We can cry our lives away, but if they were here, they'd say, you know what she would say. Forward, you must keep moving on. 
Oh, man. Still hard to come to terms with the fact that Pyrrha is dead, you know. I feel like we barely even got to see her. It's all just the... Uh... Yeah, I think. Yeah, sorry. That was just all uh, instrumental. But yeah, I, I really feel like we didn't really get to see Pira all that much before she died, which is super sad, by the way. I'm sure you guys all know my reaction was uh, was pretty tame, to be fair with you. I, I can't just let out the screams that I want to let out. You'd think I was crazy. But uh, yeah, like I said, a lot of people complained about Volume 4 and apparently Volume 5's just the, the pacing's not that good and stuff like that. I can't really count or speak for Volume 5 because, you know, I, I haven't watched it yet. But yeah, no, I liked Volume 4. It was a lot slower, don't get me wrong, and there wasn't as, as much action. But like I said, I feel like you have to have those, like, slower character building arcs that lead up to, like, you know, this big climactic battle. I have no idea if the, the fight with Salem and all that has happened. I don't know if that's still ongoing or if there's like a new big bad or whatever that comes after her but obviously i feel like it's all gonna lead up to obviously them fighting salem like it's gotta be and i'm assuming the inner circle so they'll fight cinders uh Tyrion, the other ones that were there that i forget i don't think i actually heard the names of them you guys have probably told me them but i have a terrible memory so i've probably forgotten already but uh and then obviously fighting Salem herself. I don't even know who's going to fight her. You would assume it would be the gang. But you never know. There may be more people that, uh, that are there. Anyways, enough of my ramble. Song was great. Obviously, like I said, that was just the whole them dealing with the repercussions of Volume 3. Which, it's a nice song. It was really nice. But moving on, we have like Morning Follows Night. Let's go. Those fucking abs, man. Hell yeah. I used to have abs back in the day until I moved in with my girlfriend. This is definitely Blake's song, then. <laughs> I mean, it was pretty obvious with the picture, but you know. Call back to, uh, you know, the whole Yang thing. Oh, I hope she smashes uh, Sun. I've just seen that, I've just seen the contrast between them two, the fact that he's got like blonde golden hair and she has dark, like dark purple black hair. But you know what they say, opposites attract.
I would comment on this, <laughs> like the music, but I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, this one. Just all about the fact that obviously Blake regrets her past and everything she's done. And of course, she feels really bad about the whole Yang situation because it's just—it's not her fault, obviously. It's that stupid goddamn prick's fault, but she blames her, herself for it because she and him were like together. They worked together, at least. And because Yang tried to help her, as every good friend would, she got a chopped off arm. That's her reward. Is, uh, it's not really what you want, is it? Not really. Ah, uh, Lamar Hall. <laughs> Somebody mentions that if you say Lamar Hall, assume there's rapping somewhere coming into it. <laughs> Do you ever see anything of Sun? Like his backstory? I'd like to see a bit more backstory on him. His family, if he even has one. Awesome! Epic, as always. But uh, yeah, like I said, I didn't, I didn't really have to comment on that one all that much. It was pretty self-explanatory what the song was about. Yeah, I, I always feel bad for Blake though, because like, she obviously she thought she was doing right by going with the uh, the White Fang and helping them and stuff like that. Realized, you know, they're giant throbbing bell ends, so left, and now she has to deal with the repercussions of you know them attacking her friends essentially and of course she blames herself for what happened to yang and it's the reason she left now she's went home daddy dearest will uh will deal with her he'll deal with her which by the way epic the fact that uh the one uh, her mom's voice actress is tamari from naruto which i also found out someone did say who the dad was as well and i can't think of it off the top of my head I'm sure someone in the comments will, will tell me. I'll just flick through the comments and find out again. But yeah, all always with the, the famous voice actors. I love it. Yes, pretty self-explanatory song. Moving on to the next one, which is Bad Luck Charm. Which I'm going to guess is about um, Crow. I would like to imagine. Well... You drew that fan art, huh? I swear my girlfriend thinks I'm gonna run off with a man at some point, you know. I'm very homoerotic when it comes to <laughs> to like male celebrities and, and stuff like that. All as a joke, of course, but you know. There's always an air of truth there. Again, this one's pretty self-explanatory about, you know, his semblance and the fact that you can't really have anyone near him. I like the song, though.
I'm an albatross, you call yourself a bird. Actually, yeah, to be fair, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, though. The, the dude, if this is what he actually, like, feels about himself. Seems like he has a lot of hatred for himself. Which I guess would explain the, the hefty amount of drinking that he does. Just another one, but the yeah, I let it run. It's nearly done, anyways. Epic song, hell yeah, yeah. I mean, again, <laughs> the, the song's pretty super self-explanatory, but we'll go through it anyways. If that is what Crow really feels about himself, though, it's kind of messed up, like, how little he cares. Well, I wouldn't say how little he cares for himself, but, like, the fact that he literally thinks of himself as nothing but a bad luck charm, as he put it. And, obviously, he doesn't want anybody near him because he causes nothing but bad luck. Which, again, is not his fault, but, yes, it is true that, you know, if you if you within distance of him, chances are something's gonna happen to you. Whether it's you know, I, I don't know how bad they can get, that's the thing. Can his, like, semblance, because I know he can't, like, control it, but, like, what, is it, like, depending on, like, you know, how much he likes you? Like, like for example, Ruby, he, she will get bad luck when she's next to him, but it'll be, like, mundane stuff, walking into something, um, stepping in crap, you know, and then when it comes to his enemies, like, when he was fighting Tyrion, when he stepped on the wood and he like broke and he like fell through and stuff like that. Is it more severe the the more threatening he finds you and the more he hates you? Or is everybody just like, doesn't matter who you are, you're getting screwed over by him and he can't control how severe it is. You might be walking with a knife one day, boom, you trip, you stab yourself in the throat, you die. It's like in another situation if you've ever seen that anime. It's messed up, highly recommend you watch it. <laughs> Moving on to the next one. Another great one. This is when uh, Weiss was singing to everybody at the party. And not one person was listening to her, might I add. She's literally singing about how much she like hates her dad and wants to leave and all this different stuff. And everybody just starts clapping at the end. Clearly nobody was listening to her at all. You can always tell when it's a wise song, can't you? <laughs> I am. There's a part of me that's desperate for changes. Tired of being treated. Strong. 
I mean, you kind of proved that you can be. You left. Despite your father's... I was going to say wishes. <laughs> despite his demands to stay there. Is it bad that I low-key kind of hope Jack dies? Like, I wouldn't even be sad at that point. God damn tell him wise Damn straight he did. He's not even a part of the goddamn family. So that's Winter and Weiss that are left then, because it seems Winter realized he's a giant dickhead. I was going to say a dildo if Dickhead came out. <laughs> I was like, is that too much for YouTube? Nah, we're good. We're good. Hell yeah. These always have like really cool instrumental parts at the end of them. I like them. God damn, I need a haircut. <laughs> I wonder how far she got then, because obviously she paid that guy to, to take her, and he was like, yeah, I'll take his... I can't remember how far he said he would take her. Did he say Mistral? I, I really don't remember. Because we know Yang was on the island. Hell fucking yeah. You know, the contrast, like, difference between Mirror Mirror Part 1 and how, like, depressed she was, basically saying that, you know, her dad controls her life. Compared to now, I mean, the song is literally called This Life Is Mine. Like, she's completely changed from, you know, daddy's little girl to badass warrior, part of Ruby, I'm going to kick ass and take names. She have learned how to summon that giant iron golem thing that she fought um, during the, the trailer. God damn epic. Yeah, she's changed a lot though. And I can't believe I I, I used to, I, I didn't even used to like her. Like the first like two episodes, I was like, nah, she ain't for me. But next one, let's go. Home. This sounds extremely depressing. I don't like it already. Oh, okay. That is adorable. Your cries, close your eyes, stay with me. Let's just dream. Quietly of what might 
I don't remember when this played. I'm sure you guys will tell me in the comments, but... nice song I'm just I really can't remember or picture in my head when this would have played Again, this is an adorable song, I just... <laughs> it seems to be a Yang song. So if it is, I'm going to have to assume during one of the many scenes where she's with Tai. Although I could be incredibly wrong about that. Chances <laughs> are, probably am. It's just like when, when she was writing the letter, I, <laughs> I really can't think of when this song was. Absolutely adorable song. Yeah, really nice song, but like like I said like three times, I just can't picture in my head when that was in the, the volume. You know, the only time I can actually think is when Ruby was writing that letter. But I, I don't recall there being that depressing of a song. I wouldn't really say it was depressing, but you know, it was like slow and very like melodic and nice. I don't know. Nice song though. But moving on to the next one, we have Armed and Ready. I wonder who this is about. Yeah, I think we have this song and then we've got two more. It happened. 
happens every night. I watch my world ignite, but there's no waking from this nightmare. The stage is always set, the place I can't forget. Yeah, I'm assuming this is when she was having nightmares about, you know, getting her arm cut off and what have you. Oh. Hello. It's just, yeah, okay. So this is when she's like thinking about when she tried to save Blake. Yeah, again, another pretty self-explanatory song. This is her getting over the whole depression of the situation that happened with her. And moving on. Yeah, again, self-explanatory song, really cool though. I really like this one, I like the upbeatness of it. <laughs> hey. I hate like that lane, that's a pretty cool one. Yeah, I wonder what's going to happen when she next meets um, Adam, though. Because there's got to be a rematch between them. She's getting a lot better at fighting now. She's not just one noted. Like I said, nothing much to really say on that one. It's the 
same as all the other songs here. They're, they're pretty self-explanatory, but yeah. I really want to know what's going to happen. I'm hoping that there's going to be a rematch between Adam and um, Yang. Because if there's not, I will be very disappointed. But I don't know what's going to happen. Like, I don't know if that does happen. I don't know if she'll freeze up and freak out. Because obviously, you know, the last time she went up against him, she kind of lost an arm. Kind of a reason to be a bit, little bit, you know, apprehensive about going up against someone that could do that to you. But like I said, when she was fighting with Ty, she was a lot less one noted it wasn't just fighting by trying to punch someone she was using her legs she was kicking she was moving about ty even said don't like stop relying on your semblance because that's all she basically did she would sit there she would take the damage not probably on purpose but then she would dish it back twice as hard but every fight that she's won she's won using her semblance which is all hunky dory and it's all fine but what's going to happen when you take too much damage and then you end up getting KO'd before you can even dish it back? And what if you miss? What if you don't hit the people that you're trying to hit with that with that two times damage and now you just wasted it? You're exhausted. Your aura goes down. You get stabbed in the eyeball. It's a bit dramatic, but you, you, you get my point. <laughs> Lesus Natura. Wow. Is this about that, uh, I, I forget what it's called, that crazy ass looking um, Grim? Well. I don't know how the song goes. But it's just about Salem. I can't tell. Alusus Natori. Okay, that's how it's pronounced. Perfect Latin. I think. Sounds Latin to me, I don't know. <laughs> I can't tell what this song's about. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was about that weird grim creature, which I forgot the name about. But then I can't tell if it's about Salem. Salem. So bad with names.
God damn, hit those fucking high notes. Look at that. I feel like it said, uh, Last is Notori way too many times. I feel like I'm gonna start summoning demons in my fucking kitchen or something. Good song though. Terrified that I've just summoned a creature. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I really couldn't tell who that song was about. Like, if I've got to assume it was about some sort of Grim, right? Maybe Salem? I had a picture of Ruby there, so I was I was super confused it was about her, but I I, I couldn't put two and two together. I'm sure you, I mean, you guys will let me know in the comments because I'll that one pff, pff, straight over my head. There's a garden where I go. Bumblebee. If you meet me there, no one will know. In the springtime, in the sun, we can be alone without anyone. All right. It's an interesting one to end off on. All the butterflies and the birds keep a secret. No, they won't say a word. Bumblebee. That was the that was the ship for Yang in in Blake. God damn, I'm, I forgot a name for a second there. I can't tell. Does Yang love Blake? Is there a thing going on there with her? So there's a weird love triangle situation between Blake, Sun, and um, and Yang. But it's not exactly a triangle, but you know what I mean. Is this just catering to the, the Bumblebee fans? Is this canon? Is this why she likes to keep Sun at, at, at like arm's length? I so wish I could play an instrument, you know. I used to be decent on the drums back in the day, but not anymore. I used to be able to read music and everything. Pretty sure I've mentioned that before. <laughs> I'd love to learn the keyboard, but my brain don't work that way. The... Mm -hmm. To anyone who can play the keyboard and piano, props to you, because that shit is hard. I've tried. Epic! Alright then. Yeah, I loved every single one of those songs as per usual. Comes as no surprise to anyone because I, I I love all of the songs in Ruby. I don't know what it is, but the fact that they like cater to the actual storytelling just makes the song so much better than, than just like a normal, just random song in the background that's badass to go with the, you know, the badass moments or sad to go with the sad moments. There's actual substance, there's actual meaning behind them which is what you want. 
Yes, uh, that, that, um, less is not a one. I'm not going to say it in case I do summon demon. That, uh, that kind of went over my head. I really couldn't tell who that was about. Like I said, I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments. These are really good with the big paragraphs of about each one of them and, and the hidden meaning behind them and, and the stuff that I've missed. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm sure you guys will let me know. But yes, officially now we can move on to volume five. There is three character shorts, I think. Blake, Ruby and Yang, maybe. I, I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure there's three of them. So I'll, I'll watch them, depending on how long they are. I'll either watch them, then watch one episode, or I'll just watch them and then watch the two episodes like I usually do. We'll just have to wait and see how long that is. I'm not sure how long Volume 5 is. Hopefully it's decently long. And uh, yeah, I, I can't wait. Because people say that Season 6 is really good as well. And so I kind of want to just get, get to there, get to that point. But, you know, I'll enjoy Season 5, though. don't get me wrong. I'm not going to rush Season 5 and just be like, yeah, that's pretty cool, on to the next one. Yeah, that's pretty cool, on to the next one, and then just try and get up to Volume 6. I'll enjoy it for what it is while I'm watching it at the time. Yes, as we are almost reaching 50 minutes, thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you made it to this point, massive thank you to, to listening to me ramble on. These are, uh, these are absolute gems. If you did enjoy this video, please do leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Like I say, I always get loads of comments of you guys letting me know all of the stuff that I've missed and hidden meanings behind all of the lyrics, uh, which, again, I appreciate massively. Um, yeah, kind of wait to watch Volume 5. Really excited to get into it. Whether it's slow or it isn't, I don't really care. The story is the story, and I will love it either way. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great week. I'll see you guys in the next video. Namaste and goodbye.